Good Friday afternoon to you fellow YouTubers. This is Apple Stub Bushcraft Stuff and Things with another MRE review. Today we're reviewing the Warnick Company's 2004 menu, number 24, and that's meatloaf with gravy. Again, packed by the Warnick Company, McAllen, Texas. As you well know by now, I'm not a fan of struggling with the peelable seals. I prefer to handle them like that. Let's get to the contents, which are supposed to be meatloaf with gravy, mashed potato, vanilla wafer cookie, jelly, crackers, cocoa beverage powder, accessory packet B, a spoon, and a flameless ration heater. Accessory packet B it supposedly contains coffee, sugar, creamer, salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet tissue, hand cleaner, and red pepper and candy of some kind, vanilla, caramels, or possibly chocolate. So let's pull this stuff out and we'll see what goes. On the very top we have mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. And the packing date on that is the 294th day of 2004. I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but that's it. Mashed potatoes. Accessory packet B. We read off to you what the contents of those is. And on the very top of that end you can see the white packet says Ingredients, ground red pepper. You have a popular spoon, which we'll set to the side. Apple jelly. Hmm. Haven't had good results with that in the past, being as how it's so old. Let's see if we can determine a packing date on this. 201st day of 2004, and it's stamped right or... Uh, It's marked right there, rolls, roll stamped into the side of the package. Cocoa beverage powder, 230th day of 2004. Again, it's embossed or roll stamped into the side of the package. And looks like we have ever popular, I thought that was going to be crackers. Cookie, vanilla cream, sugar wafer, 200 and 46th day of 2004. There it is, right there. Yeah, ba da ba -do. Crackers. Let's see if we can determine the packing date on that. Stamped on the back, 302nd day, 2004. Ration heater, flameless, 309th day of 2004. Looks like possibly the entree, meatloaf, caramel color added with brown onion gravy. Packing date is 302nd day of 2004. And what is this? I have no idea. Whatever it was, it was packed on the 151st day of 2003 uh, it says B1 I've got an idea open it up see what comes out of this monster oh that's the candy two and I count them two Tootsie Rolls wahoo all right, so I think today we're going to spare our flameless ration heater and use it in another day for something else. So I'm going to heat up some boiling water and pop this meatloaf and gravy in there for about 15 minutes, and we'll get right back with you.
And since the meatloaf and gravy comes with mashed potatoes, I'm going to throw those in boiling water too so they'll both be hot. Sound like a plan? Does to me. Let's unbox these first and see what we got. Set them out on the tray. So this is the mashed potatoes. Meatloaf with uh, onion gravy. Also want to take a look at the packages and make sure they look like they have not separated. I don't smell anything on that one. The gravy one looks nice and tight. So there's our Tootsie Rolls. I put them over here. Crackers are always fun. And this is how I usually open them. Crackers, yay. This looks familiar. I seem to have seen this kind of, oops, I broke it. Vanilla wafer cream cookie. Seen those in the past when I was a kid. Not a big fan of those. I'm going to keep everything tidy. Cocoa beverage powder. We've got our stainless steel dual wall beverage cup there. So, what we're going to do is boil some water. While the main course and mashed potatoes are boiling in its own water, and we'll have hot cocoa. And as for the accessory pack, again, this is accessory pack at B. We have non-dairy creamer, taster's choice coffee, good old MRE matches, ground red pepper, let's pick those like that, iodized salt, moist towelette, MRE toilet paper, domino sugar packet, and two pieces of gum, which look pretty chewable. All right. Now we're going to get the water boiling, and we'll get back with you soon. So the main course is boiling now, and we'll take a look at some of the other things. We have some water already heated up and boiled for our hot chocolate. I'm going to pour in about somewhere around a cup. I'm not going to mix it with coffee today to make a GI mochaccino because I'm not that fond of coffee. It tastes okay if it's cold and I'm out in a hunting camp somewhere. Wouldn't mind it a bit. But for everyday use, I'm just not a coffee drinker. I'm going to let that settle for a bit. Set it off to the side. I'll let it sit here. Why not? You can hear the water boiling in the container that's got the two entrees in it. So we're going to let that go for 10 minutes or so. I'll set a timer on it. While the mashed potatoes and the meatloaf are boiling away, we finish stirring the hot chocolate beverage drink, cocoa beverage drink. Here's to your health. quite hot.
and quite good. That would do it without the. I don't fit in there. Well, that would do it without the uh, coffee anytime for me. I'm going to set this just ahead of the tray there. Now, my cookie has broken into pieces. I'm going to try a piece of it. Pretty much the way I remember. So this is a double layer cookie of wafer and a sugary cream filling and then another wafer and sugary cream filling. It's colored orange but it doesn't have any orange flavor. Gonna need this jelly. In the past, I've experienced this apple jelly from MREs, usually is quite brown. Make a little pouring spout. Smell it. Might taste a little bit of it on a spoon. Look at that, it's actually the right color. Mmm, this might be interesting. Apple jelly on an MRE cracker. Some of it is actually jelly. Jellyfied, look at that. It's not bad. The cracker smells stale, but not. Spoiled. The jelly tastes good. Wash that down with a little cocoa. So I've had about enough of that cookie. I'm not really a fan of such sugary, sweetie things. It's just fine. It tastes great. It tastes fresh, quite edible, not stale, not rancid. It's just too sweet for me right now. The jelly is not all that sweet. and I'm going to have just a little bit more of it. Call it good on the jelly and on the crackers. They're both okay. I'm not going to eat them all. Tootsie rolls. They're sealed, bendable. You can tell that there's a three sided cardboard protector in there, for lack of a better word. I'm going to put these in one of my kits. I'm not going to eat those today. But they're Tootsie Roll branded. Tootsie Roll since 1896. I don't have any intention right now of using any of the uh, accessory packet contents. So I'm going to set those to the side. And they will get included in some of my kits somewhere. It's always nice to have some of that stuff with you. Good chocolate. So while we wait for the entree and the mashed potatoes to continue boiling, we'll take a brief time out. <clears throat> some of you may be asking yourselves, ah, why doesn't he open the Tootsie Rolls? 
I want to open them because they're vintage and because they're still sealed, but there's two of them, so I will open one and try it. There you can see the one, two, three, four, five and a half segments. Or maybe five full segments, counting the little end on there. Quite bendable. I'm going to bend off and break a little segment off of it and try it out. If you have temporary fillings in your mouth, that would definitely pull them out. But I don't. There's a Tootsie Roll. We'll be back when the entree and the mashed potatoes have finished heating up. Alright, the time has come to check out the heated up retort pouches, the meatloaf and the mashed potatoes. So we'll bring them over here and put them on the tray, zip them open and see what they look like. Here's the mashed potato retort pouch. It's very hot. I couldn't handle it except by the edges. I don't see any mashed potatoes leaking out of it. Here is the meatloaf with gravy retort pouch. Also quite hot. I had one of these separate before so I'm checking to see if it's intact and it appears to be. So what I'm going to do first is spread out the mashed potatoes. Yeah. That is smoking hot. Smell cheesy. Now look okay. Ah, yow, yow, yow. That is hot. Oh man. Oh, I thank goodness for the tongs, huh? Okay. So. Before we go any further, let's take a little taste of the mashed potatoes and a smell. They smell kind of cheesy. A little bit lumpy. There's a definite cheesy flavor in there. It's very subtle, but it's it's detectable. And uh, it's more like homemade mashed potatoes because there's lumps. I think they're okay. Now let's take a look at the meatloaf and gravy. Big old meatloaf patty in there and gravy. We'll pour it out on top of the mashed potatoes. There's lots and lots and lots of gravy in there. I don't know what it's supposed to smell like. It smells okay. 
didn't come squirting out when I opened the package or anything. Mm -mm -mm. So let's get a little piece of that meatloaf. Texture appears to be what you would expect from a mass prepared meatloaf. It's not like mom would make, that's for sure. And around here, mom makes pretty good meatloaf. has the consistency of something like you would get in a cafeteria at school or maybe uh, in a cafeteria along the sidewalk. Mass prepared, kind of uh, lacking in any kind of palatable, really good texture that's pleasing to the mouth, but nutritious I would say probably. Try a little bit with some gravy. Gravy's kind of watery. It's supposed to have a garlicky um, flavor to it. I don't really taste that very much. Definitely a processed meat. Definitely pretty old. 2004 vintage makes it 13 years old at least. Maybe going on 14. It's edible. I wouldn't give it two thumbs up, but I'd sure give it one. So there it is, one thumb. One thumb up. The Tootsie Roll was a, a one thumb up because it was a little bit old, but it was edible, it tasted like a Tootsie Roll, didn't pull any of my caps off when I ate it. The cookie was a little too sweet for me, I had a few bites of that and I gave the rest to my chow hound dog. And the apple jelly was good, it was actually jellyfied mostly and not liquefied like they sometimes are tasted like apple. It was not terribly discolored. It wasn't brown. It was sort of a golden yellow. And it tasted good. I had some of that on the crackers and I gave the rest of the crackers to my um, chow hound dog. And I'm going to give him the rest of this because I'm just not really eating that kind of food these days. But it's good and if I were in camp and that was what I had, I certainly would eat the whole thing. I don't think I'm going to get sick from the bites of it that I had. So the hot chocolate was great. I'm going to finish that right now. Oops. It kind of settled out. Could use a little bit more water. And that about wraps that up. Again, the mashed potatoes. Taste homemade after a fashion. I would expect homemade mashed potatoes to be a little bit more white than these are, but they've been in a package for a long time and had time to change color. And uh, the meatloaf is very much processed. I wouldn't say it's uh, of the quality of dog food. It's okay for human consumption and I'll tell you what, if I were on a battlefield or hiking around and making myself hungry, on a hunting or hiking trip, I certainly wouldn't turn it down. It's just right now I'm not eating that kind of food. But it's okay. Certainly good enough. So overall I give the Meal 24, 2004 Vintage Meal 24 by Warnick, one thumb up out of two. And uh, that's not too bad. It's all edible. And uh, I'm sure it's not something's going to make you sick, at least not this one not going to make me sick. If you come across one that's spoiled, it might make you sick. 
So that's today's video. Wernick menu number 24, meatloaf with gravy and accessory packet B. And this is from 2004. Hope you have a good weekend and uh, hope you learned something from this video. And I have a few more 2004 vintage MREs stored away, probably about 16 or 18 of them. And we'll be doing some more videos on those as well as other subjects coming up. So I hope you'll stay tuned to this channel and we'll keep you informed and entertained, I hope. Have a good one. Adios.